Today we're going to go over unit one in your lab manual. We're going to go over anatomical position, the anatomical planes, directional terms, body regions, body cavities and membranes, and also the organ systems. Now we're going to go over anatomical position. So this person is standing erect, her feet are flat on the floor, her arms are at her sides, and her palms are in face and eyes are all facing forward. This presentation of the human body creates a standard point of reference that facilitates communication among scientists and healthcare professionals. Now we need to talk about the forearm positions. So when supinated, your palms face forward or upward. So on this picture, it would be right here. This is illustrating that. The radius and ulna are parallel. You can see that here. The radius is on the outside. Here's the ulna on the inside. They are parallel with each other. When pronated, the palms face rearward or downward, as illustrated here. And the radius and ulna are crossed, as you can see right there. Now we're going to go over anatomical planes and sections. So what is a section? A section implies an actual cut or slice to reveal internal anatomy. A plane implies an imaginary flat surface passing through the body. The sagittal plane divides the body into right and left regions. A mid-sagittal plane divides the body or organ into equal halves. A parasagittal, as you can see illustrated here, is you're dividing the body into um, left and right halves, well, left and right sections, but they are not equal. A mid-sagittal plane is equal right and left halves. The frontal or coronal plane divides the body into anterior, um, also meaning front, and posterior, meaning back portions. So you can see right there, illustrated there, there's the front and back. And lastly, you have your transverse or horizontal plane. It divides the body into superior and inferior portions. And you can take a look here. So as you can see, this is a sagittal section here. This is a frontal section, and here's a transverse section. Okay, now we need to go over the directional terms. So you have dorsal, and ventral, we're going to commonly use anterior and posterior. So anterior is toward the front, posterior is po toward the back. Then we're going to move over here to superior and inferior. So superior is towards the head, inferior is away from the head toward the tail. You can also use cephalic, cranial, and then inferior you can use caudal. Down here, we're going to talk about medial and lateral. So medial is toward the midline. You can see there, there's a nice line in the middle of the body here. And then lateral is away from the midline. Now we need to go over proximal and distal. So proximal is toward the point of origin. So up here is proximal. And distal is away from the point of origin. You can see down here. So your leg originates up here. This is closer to the point of origin right here, so it's proximal. And this is farther away from the point of origin, so it is distal. So now let's apply what we've learned. So for number one, the liver is blank to the urinary bladder. So where is the, the liver? The liver is right here in that right upper quadrant. And where is the urinary bladder? It's right down here, highlighted right there. So the liver is blank to the urinary bladder. What is a directional term that you could use? You could say that the liver is superior to the urinary bladder. Number two, the appendix is blank to the small intestine. So where is the appendix? You can see the appendix right here hanging off the colon, the large intestine right there. And the small intestine is right here. I don't have it highlighted, but it's right in the middle here. So the appendix is blank to the small intestine. What's a directional term you can use? You could say the appendix is lateral to the small intestine.
So now we need to talk about the body region. So you have your axial region, you have your head, neck, and trunk. Then you have, which makes up the thoracic region. It's the trunk above the diaphragm. You have your abdominal region equals the trunk below the diaphragm. And you can divide the abdominal region into quadrants. You can also divide it into nine regions. It sort of looks like a tic-tac-toe grid. We're going to go over that. Then you also have your appendicular region, upper and lower limbs. You have your upper limb, which has different regions. So your arm, also known as your brachial region, your forearm, known as your antibrachial region, your wrist, known as your carpal region, and your hand, known as the manual region, and your fingers, known as your digits. Lower limb, we have the thigh, known, known as the femoral region. You have your leg, known as the curl region. You have your ankle, known, known as the tarsal region. You have your foot, known as the pedal region. And also your toes are also known as digits. So now we're going to take a look at the abdominal quadrants and regions. So right here you can see the quadrants divided into four quadrants. You can take a look right here. You have your right upper, your left upper, and your right lower and left lower. Uh, with the different regions, you have your hypochondriac region right here. You That would be your right hypochondriac region. On the other side, you have your left hypochondriac region. Take a look here. You, here's your lumbar region. So that would be your right lumbar region. Over here would be your left lumbar region. And lastly, you have your inguinal region here. And that would be your right inguinal region. Over here is your left inguinal region. In the middle, you have your epigastric region. You have your umbilical region. You have your hypogastric region. So we need to know what is in the different quadrants. So if you have patients who are having pain in certain quadrants, specifically here, you have your appendix here. Some patients will come in and they will have um, appendicitis. They are having pain in that right lower quadrant. So you, that, that's why it's important to know what, uh, what organs are in each quadrant. So especially for a test and in real life, um, your patients are going to have pain in different quadrants. So it's important to know what organs are in those quadrants. So if you take a look here, your right upper, you have your liver, your pancreas, your gallbladder, your duodenum, and you, also your transverse colon. Your right lower, as I said, you have your appendix, your small intestine, your ascending colon. Uh, the left upper, you also have the liver, the stomach, the spleen, the pancreas, and then part of that transverse colon as well. In the lower left lower quadrant, you have your small intestine, your descending colon, and your urinary bladder. So now let's apply what we've learned. So for number one, the appendix is in the blank quadrant. So where is the appendix? As you can see, it's right down here, hanging off the large intestine. So the appendix is in the blank quadrant. So what quadrant is this right here? So that would be your right lower quadrant. Number two, the spleen is in the blank quadrant. So where is the spleen? It's up here, hiding right behind the stomach here. And what quadrant is this? So if this one is the right lower, this has to be start with left. And would that be in a left upper or a left lower? Of course, that is the left upper. Now let's go over your regional terms. So you have cephalic, meaning the head. You have facial, meaning the face. You have cervical, meaning your neck. You have thoracic, meaning your chest. Sternal, um, referring to that where your sternum is right there. Your pectoral region. Um, this is where your pectoralis muscle is here. We're going to learn about that a little bit later. You have your umbilical uh, region right there, right about right around your belly button also known as your umbilicus. You have your abdominal region uh, right here as well. That is um, That makes sense. Those are your abdominal muscles there. We're going to go over those as well later on in the semester. Inguinal region, um, that groin area right there. 
We have the pubic region. You can take a look over here, um, the mons pubis. You have uh, also you have your external genitalia. We're not really going to focus on those right now. Uh, that's coming up next semester. You have your lower limb, uh, your femoral region right there, your curl region, meaning your leg. Um, the femoral region was meaning your thigh. You have your tarsal region, um, referring to your ankle. You have tarsal bones um, in your ankle. You have your pedal region, uh, that is referring to your foot. And you have the dorsum of the foot is on the top right there. And the plantar surface is on the bottom or the sole, you can see underneath there. Also up here you have your acromial region right there, meaning that shoulder. You have the axillary region, which is your armpit there. You have your brachial region, which is referring to your arm. You have the cubital region, referring to your elbow. Antibrachial region, referring to the forearm. Your carpal um, region is referring to your wrist. You have your carpals, um, carpal bones in your wrist. You have the palmar region referring to your palm. And then um, you have a coxal region referring to that hip right there where that hip inserts. And you also have your patellar region um, right here referring to your knee. You have a patella, so that makes sense as well. We have more anatomical regions starting with the cranial region, meaning your head up here. You have your nuchal region, which is um, the back of the neck here. You have your intrascapular region between the two scapular uh, scapulas. So there's a bone here called your scapula, and then over here there's another bone here called your scapula, intrascapular, scapular region between the scapulas. Uh, scapular region, which is where your scapulas are, right here and here. You have your vertebral region right up and down here where your spine is. You have your lumbar region. We call this the lumbar spine. Uh, these are your lumbar vertebrae, so we're going to call that the lumbar region. You have your sacral region. You're going to learn that there's a bone called the sacrum here. Um, so that is the sacral region. You have your gluteal region. Um, so people call it the, the muscles in your buttocks are called your gluteals, uh, your gluteal muscles. Um, so we refer to this as the gluteal region. Um, <clears throat> there's the dorsum of your hand. Uh, so that, that's your back of your hand. Uh, perineal region right there. You have your femoral region right here as well. Um, you have your popliteal region right here, the back of the knee. You have your curl region right here, back of the leg here. You have your tarsal region. Uh, before we said your, basically your ankle. Um, and the bones in your ankle are called your tarsal bones. And then you have the calcaneal region. Is This bone right here is called your calcaneal bone, um, calcaneus, your calcaneus. Um, so that's why we call it the calcaneal region. So now let's talk about body cavities and membranes. So these are your major body cavities. You have a posterior cavity and you have an anterior cavity. Taking a look here, here's your posterior cavity here and your anterior cavity here. So your posterior cavity is made up of your cranial cavity and your vertebral cavity. As you can see here, cranial up here and vertebral down here. Your anterior cavity has um, also some other cavities as well um, within it. It has the thoracic cavity, which uh, contains the mediastinum, the pleural cavity, and the pericardial cavity. And it also has the abdominal pelvic cavity, um, which uh, consists of the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. You can see that here. So this is the abdominal cavity. Here is the pelvic cavity. Here is the pericardial cavity here. And what do you think is in the pericardial cavity? So yeah, the, the heart is in the pericardial cavity. And then the pleural cavity, those look like two big lungs right there. So yes, lungs are in the um, pleural cavity. And these cavities are lined by serous membranes um, and filled with, uh, with viscera, with uh, internal organs. 
So focusing on the posterior cavity, the posterior cavity right here, it contains the cranial cavity and the vertebral cavity. So this is the cranial cavity up here, uh, which contains your brain, and this is the vertebral cavity down here, which contains the spinal cord. Now let's talk about the thoracic cavity. As you can see, it's highlighted here in red. So this region, this here is the thoracic cavity. So but first we need to talk about the mediastinum. So highlighted here in green, the mediastinum is a region between the lungs. It contains the heart, major blood vessels, esophagus, trachea, and thymus. So it, it extends down to here. So that is right in the middle, media meaning the middle the area. Uh, pericardium, so the pericardial cavity uh, right here is around the heart. Um, and within these cavities, um, the pericardium, you have a visceral pericardium and a parietal pericardium. These are um, membranes. So the visceral pericardium is a membrane that is right against the heart. And I have a great uh, slide coming up here to illustrate that. The parietal, parietal pericardium is on, it's uh, um, directly uh, on the outside of the visceral pericardium. But there is a space um, which we call um, uh, where there is pericardial fluid. So this is the pericardial cavity here. Then we also have the pleura. So around the lungs, you have the pleural cavity and you have these membranes. You have visceral pleura, which is right on. Visceral, meaning those visceral organs. So visceral pleura must be right on the lungs and parietal pleura is not right on the lungs. It's gonna be on the other side, which we're gonna show you in a second. Now let's visualize the pericardial membranes. So on the outside here, you have the parietal pericardium. You can also call that the parietal pericardial membrane. On the inside, you have your visceral pericardium, also known as the visceral pericardial membrane. In between these two layers here, you have the pericardial cavity, which has a thin layer of serous fluid. Now let's visualize the pleural membranes, the membranes that are surrounding the lungs. So again, you have a parietal uh, layer and then you have a visceral layer. So the parietal layer is called the, the outside layer. The parietal layer is called the parietal pleura, or you can call it the parietal pleural membrane. On the inside, on the organ, you have the visceral pleura, or you could call it the visceral pleural membrane. In between the two, again, you have, instead of the <clears throat> pericardial cavity, you have the pleural cavity. And you also have a thin layer of serous fluid in the pleural cavity. So now let's talk about the abdominal pelvic cavity. So just like it, uh, the first word sounds, abdominal pelvic, uh, so you're gonna have the abdominal cavity and you're gonna have the pelvic cavity. So abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity come together to form the abdominal pelvic cavity. So the pelvic brim separates the abdominal and pelvic cavities. So right here is the separation, abdominal cavity above here, and then pelvic cavity below. Uh, the abdominal cavity contains most digestive organs, kidneys, and ureters. The pelvic cavity, cavity, on the other hand, contains the rectum, the urinary bladder, the urethra, and re your reproductive organs. Uh, we also have the peritoneum, uh, the peritoneal cavity. So the peritoneum is a serous uh, membranes of the abdominal pelvic cavity. You have your visceral peritoneum. Um, and then you have your parietal peritoneum. And we're gonna illustrate that on the next slide. So now let's illustrate what we just talked about. So the membranes of the abdominal cavity, you have your visceral uh, peritoneal membrane or visceral peritoneum right on the organs of your abdominal cavity. You can see that right there. And then you have your parietal peritoneum or parietal um, 
peritoneal membrane, which is not on the organs, it's on the outside, the, the cavity wall. So right out here, in between the visceral and parietal layers, um, visceral and parietal membranes, you have the peritoneal cavity right there. So now let's apply what we've just learned. So for number one, identify number one. So number one is right here. So what is this cavity here? Turns out that is your cranial cavity, the cavity that contains your brain. Number two, identify number 10. So where's number 10? Number 10 is right here. So what is this cavity here? Turns out that is your abdominal cavity. Number three says identify number four. Where's number four? Number four is right here. So it's making up all of these cavities here. So all of this is ref referred to as number four. So what is number four? That would be your posterior cavity. Number The number four uh, says identify number eight. You take a look, where is number eight? Look around, number eight is right here. So it is including all of these cavities here. So that must be your thoracic cavity. So now let's talk about retroperitoneal. What does that mean? If you think of retro, um, if your clothes are retro, it means they're from, from a previous time period. So retro means to go back or in the back. And so retroperitoneal. So peritoneal, we have a peritoneal cavity. So retroperitoneal behind the peritoneal cavity. So you can see here, peritoneal cavity is all of this right here. Retroperitoneal in the back of the peritoneal cavity is this right here. So you have the kidneys are retroperitoneal. You have your aorta here. You have your inferior vena cava. These are all retroperitoneal. The kidneys are most often referred to as, um, that term is most often um, used with the kidneys. So the kidneys, you can say the kidneys are retroperitoneal organs. Let's talk about potential spaces. So the key word there, potential, uh, potential, possible, meaning possible. Uh, they're found between two membranes normally pressed firmly together. So they're not physically attached and may separate and fill with fluid in unusual situations. So some great examples of that is your pleural cavity. Uh, air or fluid can accumulate between parietal and visceral pleura, forming a space. So normally there is a um, thin layer of serous fluid in there, but it can get larger. Um, it can fill up with air or fluid, um, which it's normally very small space. So then it has the potential to get much bigger in, uh, in disease situations or complications. Also the uterus, um, in a non, uh, in a non pregnant uterus, mucous membranes of, of walls are in contact. Um, so when you do have a pregnant uterus, they're not in contact. So now we need to talk about our 11 organ systems. So we can put these, group these into categories. So for protection, support, and movement, you have your integumentary system protecting you. You have your skeletal system very heavily involved with that movement and protection. Your rib cage really protects um, your vital organs. And then you have your muscular system as well. So definitely heavily um, involved with movement, uh, especially with the mu with muscular system. Internal communications and integration, you have your nervous system, you have your endocrine system. So these are the control systems of your body. You have fluid transport, uh, so circulatory system, of course, and then your lymphatic system as well uh, plays a large role in uh, fluid transport as well. Defense, uh, of course, everybody knows the immune system, that lymphatic system um, comes into play with that. Your input and output, so respiratory system, you're breathing in, you're breathing out. Urinary system, you're getting rid of uh, those wastes. And also digestive system, you're, you're intaking, you're getting input, and you're also giving output. Uh, reproductive, uh, reproduction, of course, reproductive system. 
So a great way you can remember the different systems of the body. So murders link. So muscular, urinary, respiratory, digestive, endocrine, reproductive, skeletal, lymphatic, integumentary, nervous, and circulatory. Now let's go over your organ system specifically. So starting with your integumentary system, your main organs are your skin, your hair, your nails. Uh, the main functions are protection, sensation, vitamin D production. Also now moving on to your skeletal system, the main organs are your bones and joints. The main functions are protection, support, movement, blood cell production, and mineral storage as well. Now with your muscular system, the main organs are, of course, your skeletal muscles, your cardiac muscles, and your smooth muscles. Uh, your main functions are movement, posture maintenance, and heat production. And then for your lymphatic system, your main organs uh, are the lymphatic vessels, the spleen, the thymus, the lymph nodes, and your main functions are uh, fluid, uh, returning fluid that has leaked from the blood vessels and immunity and protection. The main organs of the respiratory system are, of course, your lungs and your respiratory tract. The main functions are to oxygenate the blood and remove carbon dioxide from the blood. For the urinary system, the main organs are the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, and the urethra. And the main functions are to filter the blood to form urine, store and transport urine, regulate fluid and electrolyte, and acid-base balance. For the nervous system, your main organs are your brain, your spinal cord, and all your nerves. The main functions are control system. They're basically a control system of the body. They maintain homeostasis through production of nerve impulses. For the endocrine system, the main organs are the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the thyroid and parathyroid glands, your ovaries, your testes, the pancreas, the thymus, and the adrenal glands. The main functions are to maintain homeostasis through the production of hormones. For the circulatory system, your main organs are your heart your, and your blood vessels. The main functions are to pump and carry blood to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the organs and carry deoxygenated blood to the lungs. For the digestive system, your main organs are your esophagus, your stomach, your intestines, your liver, your pancreas, and your gallbladder. And the main functions are to break down and absorb food, also absorb water, water and electrolytes, and eliminate the indigestible substances. For the male reproductive system, the main organs are the testes, the ductus deferens, the vas deferens, and the penis. The main functions are production of hormones and procreation. For the female reproductive system, the main organs are the ovaries, the uterus, and the vagina. The main functions are production of hormones and, of course, procreation as well.